العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد النبي الكريم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين Welcome again to the stories of the Prophet's peace be upon them And we are with the great story of Abraham, Ibrahim عليه السلام Great, great story We talked about his story in Iraq where he lived in Babylon the great city in northern Iraq and then he was forced out although he showed them the miracles that he was a true messenger and he discussed with the king himself that they worshipped and proved to him that he is no lord, no god but still none, none of them believed except his cousin, uh, his nephew uh, uh, Lot and then later on his wife Sarah joined him and he was forced out of Iraq into the direction of Syria. Syria, Palestine, Jordan, and Lebanon was one area at that time called Al Sham. And that is the name still known in Arabic for that area in, in that part of the world. So he was moved into Syria. He lived in the city of Haran. Cities still exist in Syria today. So he went there. Now, in the beginning, he was, uh, you know, a foreigner. So he lived, he watched, he studied the community. And that is something as a message. Before you do call to your message, try to understand those around you. What do they believe in? How could you approach them? And he studied that city, he became a friend, he became a friend for many people until they considered him part of them. So Haran is now his new homeland. At that time he married Sarah. Sarah was not from Haran, Sarah was from his own city and joined him later on. Now Sarah was a very beautiful woman. It is narrated by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that no woman ever created on earth was more beautiful than Sarah, except Eve, except Hawa, the wife of Adam. The most beautiful, beautiful woman ever is Eve. And then Sarah, or Sarah, the, uh, the correct spelling or pronunciation is Sarah. But this is how she is described. So he lived, lived in Haran, and one day when he was ready to preach, he wanted to show the people of Haran in the best of way that they are wrong by worshipping other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What did the people of Haran worship? They worshipped the stars, the moon, the sun, and the planets. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Allah, glory to him, the all-knowing and all-wise bestowed upon Ibrahim, peace be upon him, knowledge and vision of his power and kingdom beyond the apparent majesty of the stars and const constellations. What does it mean? What does it mean? See, the people worship these stars and planets and things in the sky. Before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let Ibrahim call them to the true, true God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty with his ability, let Ibrahim see the majesty of the universe. He saw what is in the universe. He showed him galaxies, stars, moons. Similar to what we see today, but much, much more. He saw everything. He saw it with his own eyes. And he glorified his Lord, the creator of all of this. This was before he called his people not to worship the stars. This is to affirm Ibrahim's already strong faith in 
the ability of the one God, Allah Almighty. So, after that, he went with his people, the people of Haran, to show them, he, w he wanted to call them to the message of God, but in a, in a very creative way. He went, they, they had in a certain night when it's very clear, they would go out and they worship these stars or planets, whatever. And they, they were uh, totally insane. Everyone would choose a star and say, this is my God. And they start worshiping that God. They would choose their gods and worship them. So, when they started to choose, Ibrahim السلام, did a very strange thing. He said, okay, I will choose this one to worship. Now, some scholars and some Muslims, unfortunately, thought that Ibrahim was an unbeliever. He worshipped stars and moons and planets, and then he was guided to the belief in Allah, the, the only God. A totally wrong conception about Ibrahim If you go back and read the verses of the Quran, you would see that God has shown him the, the galaxies, the, the universe, and then this event happened. So how could he worship it? And this event did not happen in Iraq, where he destroyed the idols. This is afterwards. So if you took it, take it from logic point of view, if you take it from the Quran point of view, if you take it from history point of view, it doesn't fit. He never worshipped anyone but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he, this is a creative way to show them that they are worshipping something that is worthless. It is similar that when he destroyed the, the, the idols and the statues and he left the big one, he said he did it to show them that they are in falsehood. So he wanted to argue with them that they are worshipping wrong gods. So his people started to worship. Of course, he did not worship that star that he chose. He just told them that this is my choice. And then at the end of the night, that star disappeared. And he said, I do not love a God that disappears. I mean, I need him now. Where, is you? Where are you, my God? I need you now. <laughs> He's mocking them. I mean, if you need your God and he's not there, he said, I, I, I don't want to worship something that is not present, that disappears. And then the moon started to rise, very nice, beautiful. So I said, okay, okay, I'm not going to worship a star. I'm going to choose this one as my Lord. But of course, later on, the moon set and he said, I do not worship, I don't want to worship something that disappears. Unless my Lord, unless my God guides me to the truth, guides me to him, I shall surely be among those who go astray and will be lost. And his people were listening and they were starting to think. They started to think about their own God. This is, this is the creative way to make the others think. And they continued all night until sunrise. When he saw the sun rising in splendor and might, he said, this is my Lord, this is greater, this is bigger. But when the sun, when the sun set, he said, oh my people, I am indeed free from guilt of giving partners with God. For me, I have set my face firmly and truly towards him 
who created the heavens and the earth, and I shall never take partners with God. So tell me, is this a message of somebody who did not know God? It is a way to show them that what, whatever they're worshiping are wrong gods. The stars, the moon, the sun, the planets, they cannot help you. They are not there when you need them. They cannot be gods. The true creator is the one who created them and created heavens and earth. The one and only God worthy of worship. Now, his people started to think. Some started to believe. Some started to follow Ibrahim, alayhi salam. It makes sense. It makes sense. These gods are, they all, they eventually disappear, they die. How could you worship anyone that does not continuously exist? Anyone that cannot benefit you or hurt you. But most of them, unfortunately, close their minds. As today, so most people close their eyes and minds to the truth. And some of them started to dispute and debate with him. He said, come and dispute with me, argue with me about God. How could you, when he has guided me and I've shown you the truth, how could you take partners with God? Unless my Lord wills, nothing can happen. My Lord, my God, knows all things and controls everything. Don't you see that these things have no control of anything? I have no fear of your gods, while you should fear taking partners with the almighty God. Remember, when it comes to security, who should feel more secure? The one who worships a creature or the one who worships the one that created everything? And he kept arguing with them, reasoning with them. And more people started to believe, but still most people refused the truth. Nevertheless, Ibrahim السلام, never gave, gave up. Although most people rejected his message and rejected his teachings, he wanted to save them from hellfire. He wanted to save them from worshiping worthless things. Ibrahim alayhi salam was asked to leave again by the leaders of Harran. People are be starting to believe in him and this is becoming too dangerous for the royalty of Harran. So now he is forced to go into Palestine. From Palestine, he continued his way into Egypt. Egypt, the greatest civilization on earth at that time. Before he had a chance to live in Egypt, before he had a chance to know the people of Egypt and to tell them the truth, news have already reached the king of Egypt that there, was, there is a man coming from the direction of Palestine with the most beautiful woman on earth. And the king wanted that woman for himself. So he sent his soldiers to bring him this woman. And he gave them the orders that if she has a husband, kill her husband. Now the soldiers came. Now, Ibrahim has, didn't have even a chance to settle into Egypt. This is just as he entered. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed Ibrahim, peace be upon him, of the impending danger that is coming to him. 
Ibrahim told Sarah, O oh Sarah, there are no believers in Egypt except you and me. If they ask you about me, say that you are my sister, meaning my sister in faith. So the soldiers came toward Ibrahim and Sarah, and they asked Ibrahim, who is this woman? And he said, she is my sister. And they went to him, to her, and they asked her, who is this man? And she said, this is my brother, meaning my brother in Islam, in faith. Ibrahim, alayhi salam, is, uh, the Prophet sallam, tells us, Prophet Muhammad tells us, that Ibrahim, alayhi salam, never lied in his life except three, you know, on three occasions. The first one when he said to the idol worshippers that I am sick, I see that I'm sick, so that they can leave him alone with the idols as, uh, to, as an excuse for him to, to, to crash them and uh, uh, demolish them. And uh, exactly that's, ha that's what happened. The second time when he was, la uh, when he was asked who, who destroyed our uh, gods and he said the big one. It was a lie, but both of them were for the sake of God, to continue showing them that they are misled and mistaken in taking partners with God. And the third time that he lied is when he said, this is my sister. Now we see in every case that it can be interpreted as not a lie, while we unfortunately lie very clearly and we are not touched by these lies. Now, he said to them that this is my sister. She said, this is my brother. So they left him alone and took her to the king. Now, when the king saw her, she was just amazing with beauty. So this tyrant king wanted Sarah for himself without marriage. So he tried to grab her with her hand, with his hand from her hand to pull her to his bed and she prayed while she was in that moment she prayed very nice prayer she said oh Allah if you know that I believe in you and in your messenger and that I am pure from adultery and I am I have protected my chastity except for my husband. I was not touched in sexual relation except by my husband. Then, O oh Allah, do not let this, believer, this unbeliever touch me. So the king was approaching her while she was making this prayer. When he stretched his hand, his hand was paralyzed and froze in its place. He could not move. He could not move his hand. And he started to cry, unable to move his hand. And his aides came into the palace, rushing to help him, but nobody could do anything. So the king pleaded with Sarah, please, if you have done this to me, please, let me go. And I promise you, I will not harm you. And with that promise, Sarah asked Allah to let him go, and he could move again. But he tried again, and immediately he was paralyzed until Sarah let him go. And then he tried a third time, and every time he does that, he was paralyzed. And when he was for the third time left alone, he could move, he said, this is not a human being. This is a devil. Take her away from me. And he was so shaken, so afraid of her. He said, give her some gifts. Please her. Do not let her harm me. He was so afraid of Sarah. And he gave her some jewelry. And he gave her a she slave. By the name of Hajar. Hajar. Hagar. And she took these gifts and went back to Ibrahim to tell him, that she was saved. Ibrahim, during all of that time, was standing up praying for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save his wife from this tyrant king. So immediately, when she returned to him, 
he said, let's leave this town, let's leave this city, it's too dangerous. And he went back to Palestine. So that was the story of Ibrahim in Egypt. Next time, inshallah, we will continue with his story in Palestine and his story with Ishmael and his mother Hagar in Palestine and in Mecca. That is our next story, inshallah. Thank you for listening. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.